what is up guys this is electric pulse 61 here and oh my goodness it has been way too long i think it was like six months maybe even longer since my last video i am so sorry about that but uh hopefully we won't have to run into that issue again where i take a half a year to post my next video i got a lot of comments from you guys saying that you really liked my last video you thought i was very uh in depth and explained it well and i appreciate that so i'm going to try to continue with that and make another great video here so let's just jump right on into it and as promised we're going to talk about movement getting our little hippo guy to move around on the screen so what we have to do is we have to first of all make sure our code still works okay so we get that going so what we're going to do we're going to open up our character now here in this editor window is where we do all of our programming is where we make everything happen like with the world file so here, this is automatically generated. Every new actor has this act method, which is called, I believe, 60 times a second. It's called every time, every game tick, basically. This is what happens every single time the game updates, which is usually, I believe, 60 times per second. So if you want it to check for a keyboard input, you put it in here. If you want the guy to move around, put it in here. Everything goes in here in the act method. So when this game tick is called, when the hippo is updated, what do we want him to do? We want him to move. So we're going to create a move method, which will contain all of the instructions on how to get this hippo to move. So here in this move method is where we're going to put all of the instructions. We're going to get the keyboard inputs, we're going to get our hippo to move, and we're going to do all of that stuff inside of this move method. So the first thing we have to do is we have to set up some if statements. Let's set up four of them because we need four directions, right? W, A, S, and D, or the arrows, whichever you want. And so in each of these if statements, in these condition spots here in between the parentheses, we're going to put different conditions for the different keys. So Greenfoot has a really, really great method to help you determine if a key is currently being pressed. Here's what it is. You do greenfoot dot is key down. And then in these quotes, you just put the key name. So like you would put up if you wanted to do the up key or anything like that. I'm just going to use W, A, S, and D. So if the greenfoot dot is key down, then we want to do something. And that's what would go here. We would do something. So we can just copy this because programmers are extremely lazy, paste it in for all of these. So now we have four different input commands. So now if we just change this to S, A, and D, we have our four inputs already done. We could have this print out something, we could have this do anything we want. So what we're going to do is we're going to uh, update this hippo's position. We are going to change the Y or the X. So how this works is on this screen here, 0, 0, the coordinate, imagine this is a big grid. The coordinate X equals 0, Y equals 0 is right here in this corner. And when we increase the X, he moves this way. When we increase the Y, he moves this way down. When we decrease the X, obviously he'll go left. When we increase the Y, I mean decrease the Y, excuse me, he'll go up. So if we want him to move up, like with the W, we'll have to decrease the Y. So what we're going to do inside of this method here in the move method, we're going to create a new variable, int Y and int X. These are going to just be temporary to hold the current Y and X so we can change them with these if statements down here. So what we're going to do is we're going to set the Y equal to the get Y and we're going to set X equal to get X. So what these methods here do, these are built into the actor class. We don't have to make anything with these. And they will just basically just return the x coordinate. So if he's at like y equals 50, x equals 100, it'll this will say, okay, this is now 50 and this is now 100. That's all that this does. And so now with these variables here, we can change them here. So if he's going to move up with the w key, we have to decrease the y value because remember down is increasing the y, up is decreasing the y. So we're going to do y minus minus. 
So what this does is it just decreases y by 1. That's what these little 2 minuses do. It just says y, you're going to be decreased by 1. And the y says, okay, so now I'm 1 less. So if this was 15, now it's 14. So s, we're going to increase the y. So the opposite of the minus minus is the plus plus. With a, we're going to do the same thing with the x. So a would be to move into the left. That's decreasing the x, x minus minus. And for the d, we're going to increase the x. Okay, so now that we've increased and decreased these variables accordingly, now what we have to do is we have to update his position so that way he moves on the screen. Right now, he doesn't actually do anything. So we have to officially change his position. The great way that you can do this is to use the built-in method set location. And how to do that is you literally use set location. And in these parentheses, you just got to tell it your x and y. So we're going to have x and y. That that does is it'll basically say, okay, you've updated your x and y here. Now change your location on the screen to that. So when we compile this and we hit run, if I hold the keys, he moves around. He's really slow right now. So if we wanted to change that, we could, of course, just change the numbers. But our hippo walks. He's walking around on the screen, which is what we want him to do. If I hold down, let's just say W, he goes up. S, he goes down. A, he goes left. D, he goes right. If I hold down multiple keys at the same time, let's just say W and D, he'll go diagonal. So this is very robust. And if I hold two keys going in opposite directions, he just stops moving. So this is very robust, very simple. Obviously, it's only, what is this, like six lines, seven lines of code. Very quick, easy move method. You could copy and paste this into all of your different actors and they'll all move perfectly fine. So that's all we have time for today. Tomorrow, hopefully, if I get around to it, maybe it'll be another six months, who really knows? But what I'd like to do is I'd like to create uh, another hippo or a different actor that can jump around or use the arrow keys to move. He'll sit around down here on the bottom and if you hit the space bar, he'll jump. Then we can get into physics and getting into the acceleration and collision detection potentially, who knows. So thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, give it a like. Make sure to comment on what you want me to put in my next video and let me know how I'm doing. I think I'm doing all right. I'm uh, trying to keep this going as best as I can. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Thank you guys so much for watching. You guys are awesome. See you later.